Hello, Thomas fans. My name is Stephanie Bolstrobe, and here's my brief take on Journey Beyond Sodor. In short, I love and hate it. I love the story. However, I hate some of the cartoonish elements in the special. Now, let's start off with the story, which is, in my opinion, the most important aspect of any Thomas special. Let's just say that for the most part, it was very strong, and for that reason alone, I think that it is one of the best Thomas specials to date, the third best, in fact, behind The Adventure Begins and Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. I think that um, Thomas and James's competition, although dragged on a bit too much, um, was really fun to see, and... Um, the fact that Thomas stole uh, James's goods train in the middle of the night was also was also something I enjoyed very much. I think that the experimental engines, um, although they were a little bit annoying, were very interesting characters. I've especially seen Lexi be hated on a lot, but Lexi reminds me of the type of person who is uh, unhappy with their lives and tries to cope through trying to seem more happy and enthusiastic than they really are. And um, that was something interesting. I really do not understand why anybody would try to push the idea that Lexi is somehow gender fluid. Uh, she doesn't come across as that to me. But that is beside the point. I overall enjoyed these characters a lot. But one character that I did not enjoy in the slightest was Beresford. Makes no sense as to why he would exist. As far as I know, there's no merchandise being made for him. And he really slowed down the pace of this movie. He also violated the laws of physics by picking Thomas up using only his cab roof. And I would honestly be perfectly happy to skip the scenes that involve Beresford whenever I watch this movie. The only good thing that came out of Beresford's existence was the song Who's Thomas, which in my opinion was very catchy, and some of the trucks' lines were very funny. But I really do think that the movie could go without that song, even though I enjoyed it. As for that one moment where Thomas spots James with Frankie and Hurricane while, while at the canal where Beresford worked, that easily could have been replaced by a scene where Thomas was at the yard where the experimental engines were working and he spotted James there. And it would have made perfect sense because as we saw when Thomas escaped the steelworks and first heard Merlin speak, we know that the line that goes up to the steelworks runs right alongside the experimental engines yard. I would have to say that my favorite part of Journey Beyond Sodor, by far, are the scenes in the middle of the movie where Thomas is at the steelworks, where Frankie and Hurricane charmed their way into persuading Thomas to spend the night at the steelworks and later work for them. Dark moments like this, where we see engines suffer and where we see that not everyone has the best of intentions, is one of the reasons why Thomas and Friends is so great. The only reason I'm saying this is because some of the soccer moms on Amazon really need to hear this. Anyway, where was I at? Oh yes, the steelworks. Which brings me to the characters, Frankie and Hurricane. I love them, especially Frankie. I think that Frankie is the best character to ever come out of the CGI series of Thomas and Friends, hands down. You want to hear another best of? I think that the Steelworks, we got the best song to ever come, of, come from the CGI series of Thomas and Friends. And no, I'm not talking about the hottest place in town, I'm talking about I Want to Go Home. Not only does it advance the plot and make us understand that Thomas misses his friends and that he will not tolerate working at the Steelworks any longer, but also it has a great instrumental and is just overall, from a musical standpoint, an amazing piece. Back to Frankie and Hurricane. I'm glad that we get to see, get to see some distinct differences between Frankie and Hurricane. For example, we see that uh, Frankie is very patronizing towards Thomas, calling him Little Tank Engine, and we see that Hurricane is more friendly, and it's also implied that he isn't quite as malicious of, as Frankie, and is more or less simply submissive to her demands. In the greatly flawed chase scene at the very end of Journey Beyond Sodor, I think we get to see just how truly cold-hearted Frankie is when, when Hurricane's wheels are melting, as Frankie makes no effort whatsoever to try to save him, but instead just wails and wails. Which brings me to my next point about Frankie's emotional display at the very end when James confronts Frankie, but then Frankie tries to make everyone feel sorry for her. And I believe that this emotional display was just manipulation. That was just her way of trying to get at least one of the engines present to stay at the steelworks and work for her. And assuming that this is what she wanted, she got what she wanted. Because the, all the experimental engines stayed. Which means that this ending is not so much the happy ever after ending that, it, that the um, writers intended the ending to be interpreted as. But maybe I'm just overthinking the ending too much. In either case though, the ending is greatly flawed. First, we get Thomas and the experimental engines hiding behind a bush, looking over the steelworks. There are no tracks, and they somehow just magically rise into the air. I have a huge problem with this. This is definitely worse than the bouncing or Thomas being swayed around the steelworks as if he was weightless. This floating scene was the most problematic scene in Journey Beyond Sodor, in my opinion. 
Many Thomas fans seem to worry that Thomas is heading in this cartoony, nonsensical direction. And I have this fear too. Not so much because of the bouncing, but because of shit like this. This is the kind of stuff that I cannot, for the life of me, tolerate. I do think that the role that Merlin played in the chase scene was actually really good. I really do wish, though, that his invisibility powers, regardless of how effective they may or may not be, would have somehow come into play in this chase scene, so that him being the King Arthur class type really would have paid off. I do think that Lexi and Theo setting up an accident in front of the steelworks was clever, although I am surprised that Frankie actually would have gone, would have gone to help them, and so that Tom, so that Thomas could go into the steelworks without them noticing right away. There was a whole lot of anticipation in this scene, with the dramatic music, with the accident and Frankie and Hurricane becoming suspicious, with Thomas telling James that he will be held hostage if he doesn't leave right away. Yet, it seems like it was sort of built up for something that was rather underwhelming in the end, since it seemed to be mostly flatbeds being shunted here and there to stop certain engines from moving around. It definitely could have been more epic than that, and, well, it actually did become more epic than that, but in the wrong way. A magnet carries Thomas over a pot of molten slag, and I really think it was a bad idea for the magnet to just release Thomas, and for a bucket to just swing him away, because then Thomas breaks the laws of physics like five times in a row. Spilling the slag and having Hurricane's wheels melt so that Merlin could save him was good character development for Merlin, but I think that this scene was better off if the magnet drew Thomas towards the pot of molten slag without the magnet ever turning off. I think it's at this point that James, the experimental engines, Frankie and Hurricane, would all eventually find Thomas. And then that is the moment where James and the experimental engines confront Frankie and Hurricane about their wrongdoings. And this has already been said before, but Frankie and Hurricane really need to be punished for their actions. It is not okay to hold engines hostage and have them work for you and stop them from coming back home to where they're supposed to work. In fact, one of the main general themes of Thomas and Friends as a whole is about ensuring that your wrongdoings will not go unnoticed. I would think Andrew Brenner would know that back in season one and in the first book of the Railway series, Henry refused to come out of a tunnel and therefore he was boarded up. Yet now, Frankie and Hurricane forced Thomas to work at the steelworks and didn't let him go home and they get no punishment whatsoever and they get less than a minute of confrontation. Aside from all the times that Journey Beyond Sodor breaks the laws of physics, this is the biggest problem that I have with the movie. As for the song, the most important thing is being friends, which plays at the very end of this movie. Um, well, I sort of like it. It's good from a musical standpoint, but the lyrics are pretty mediocre. However, I did find the fact that Sir Topham Hatt was, a, was the conductor for the song while the engines were singing at Timoth Sheds was pretty amusing. Speaking of the humor in this movie, the humor was pretty top-notch for the most part. I think that the trucks were especially funny in all of their scenes, in fact. They were the saving grace of the first scene with Beresford in it. And they were also really fun to watch in all the other scenes that they were featured in. As for the music, <clears throat> well, let's start with the score. The score is amazing throughout. That's all I have to say. Well, there's actually one problem. There was one part of the chase scene that focused on James, where the music all of a sudden became way too calm and underwhelming. It made almost all the tension in that scene lost. This lasts up until Light Switch turns on and Frankie and Hurricane find James. As for the animation, I have mixed feelings. The Sodor animation in the beginning was great. The aerial shots were astounding. As for the mainland landscape, well, it depends on the set. Some of, the, some of the sets did seem barren and unfinished, mostly in the beginning, with Thomas crossing that viaduct and Beresford's canal, and even more so that one, that one junction yard in between. Some sets, however, were actually really good. The steelworks look so depressing and grimy and dirty, and I simply love it. The gloomy landscape really helped too. As for that one overgrown area that Thomas encounters right as he escapes the steelworks, well, that seems incredibly unfinished, and some of the trees look rather two-dimensional, but I think those trees had the potential of looking good, as well as the landscape as a whole. If only Journey Beyond Sodor had that one month of extra production time that it was originally intended to have. I think that one of the best shots from Journey Beyond Sodor was when Thomas woke up after falling asleep in a siding where he heard Merlin's voice. That sunrise shot was beautiful. Overall, some sets were amazing while others are in need of significant improvement. The bouncing does bother me, and whether I'll get used to it in the future or not, well, I'm not sure. It depends. I think if the bouncing stays at the level that it's currently at, I may be able to tolerate it within the next, within the next few years, but I'll always prefer Thomas without it. 
it just looks so wrong to me. But my worries are that the bouncing is only going to get worse as time goes on. Whether it will get as bad as Chuggington, I don't know. And I think if it does get as bad as Chuggington, I may as well just stop watching Thomas altogether. Because at, the, at that point, it just completely abandons what Thomas is. Which is a somewhat realistic representation of how railways work. Aside from the fact that the engines talk. But I think at this point, just for Journey Beyond Sodor in and of itself, I think that the story is good enough to more than make up for um, certain faults like um, the bouncing and the defiance of lo the laws of physics in certain scenes. My primary fear is that it'll only get worse from here on out. I think one other thing that also helped me really enjoy this movie is the fact that Percy didn't say anything along the lines of, Thomas is my best friend. On a couple of minor notes about this movie, the sight of the Reverend W. Audrey, or the thin clergyman, dancing in Knapford Station while James was singing, disgusted me. Also, the song We Can't Do Anything should have been placed during Thomas's first meeting with the experimental engines, as placing it in the second meeting really disrupted the tension that involved James going to the steelworks with Frankie and Hurricane and Thomas wanting to save him, and instead, this whole theme of the experimental engines lacking self-confidence should have just been brought up during the second meeting, but that the actual song We Can't Do Anything would be meant would be brought up during the first meeting so that it wouldn't mess up with the pace of the movie and so that it is firmly established from the beginning of the movie that the experimental engines and in particular Lexi and Theo do not believe that they could be useful for anything I know that I've been highly critical of Journey Beyond Sodor in this review but I still think the Journey Beyond Sodor has more good than bad and that I would still thoroughly enjoy it if I watched it again thank you for listening to what I have to say about Journey Beyond Sodor if you're interested to hear more about my thoughts on various topics regarding Thomas and Friends, please be sure to follow me on Twitter. My Twitter name, like my YouTube name, is Stephanie Bolstrode.